to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, Wi-Fi's, welcome back to yet another underground <laughs> and under renovation episode of the wildest woman go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video why because when you like it well i love it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the bell for notifications of when i go live and when i upload new content so, Wi-Fi, it's been a very interesting week. You're going to get a lot of content out of this week. But today I wanted to come in and have a discussion because I'm starting to realize that the reason why we have so much polarization around certain concepts is because of our lack of understanding, our lack of education on what certain terms mean. So I had a very deep dive discussion with a client a few days back and we were talking about marriage and because y'all know I'm a scientist I'm a scientist at heart so what would you little maniacs like to do first I had to pull out some information that he may not have been <laughs> familiar with because honestly until I started you know, studying in my higher education, I had never heard of some of these concepts, at least in this context before. So, of course, I did a video in season one about polygamy to the rescue. And hmm, it would seem I'm going to have to review it, <sighs> review it for the new people, for the folks in the back. And, um, so the premise of the conversation, he came in and he basically was talking about how marriage is this Western white concept. It's very unnatural. It's very, you know, restrictive for black communities and black societies and how black women are out here in the world making this big what to do about marriage. And, you know, it just really doesn't serve a function. now. To the extent that marriage serves a function is only for those who partake in it. If you ain't going to get married, why are you worried about it? Okay, first of all, let's just go ahead and put it out on the table for real. Y'all ain't really trying to get married. Like, let's, let's just be real about that, okay? Marriage isn't even really the goal for most of these sexual relationships that we're having. If that was the case, we wouldn't have so many single mothers. Now, while I gave you the main three reasons I hear people promoting this, I'm going to give you four reasons why I call. Why do we keep, why do we rehearse? Why do you care about it? If you're not going to do it, it serves no purpose in your personal value system. Why do you keep talking about it? This is a side note. I think people in this society feel like the only way to validate their thoughts, beliefs, and feelings are if large groups of other people agree with them. And you got to stop that. The number one mission of the wireless woman, should you choose to accept it, is to deconstruct your own personal value systems so that you know what you believe and that you know that you believe what you say you believe because you don't need universal approval to be right. I know that is a radical concept. I know that's radical. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. No, it's not. It's it gets gross. the people going. It might even be heretical. But yeah, you can actually march to the beat of your very own drum. In the words of Fleetwood Mac, you can go your own way. You can go your own way. So back to the story with my client, though. So he says to me, you know, women have gotten really out of control with this whole marriage thing, which it came out 
later in the interaction that he has been with his partner for 18 years. And early on in their relationship, he basically let her know he wasn't going to marry her, left it in her court. And because she was willing to not be a wife in exchange for being treated by him like a wife, that was kind of like the trade-off. I will be dedicated to you. I will, in essence, enter into a marriage relationship with you if it will not come with any sort of marriage certificate or ceremony. So anyway, that was the great compromise, but I had to let him know. And I'm just going to tell you what my basis was for the argument that I put forward for the debate that we entered into. And he wanted to come on the podcast. (laughs) <laughs> to debate this further and I you know and I'm open to it I'm always open to a great debate find take back and keep your righteous mind because obviously you have lost it but I basically told him I said listen a marriage contract isn't between the man and the woman I know that men have felt this for a long time but let me go ahead and give you a rundown of what marriage is and how it developed Um, Even before it became a concept in Western civilization, there has always been marriage. So I told him, I said, listen, this marriage contract thing is is a, a covenant between men that a man can have a wife and no other man will come into his space and take his wife. Because back in all days, baby, if the Khan wanted your wife, if the Khan went through your village to, you know, survey his lands and he saw something he liked, baby, he taking it, you know. If it pleases your greatness, you may take my son. Father, what are you doing? Father. <laughs> A lot of men feel that if they were to take marriage out the equation, women would still choose to to have fidelity towards them. But the truth of the matter is, back in the day, whoever was the biggest, richest, most violent, important man in a civilization generally got more of the women. And there were other, what they would call common men that were not able to marry, were not able to have wives because only these men of prestige and title could marry. Marriage is a very upwardly mobile. Marriage is for the rich, okay? And it's something that had been created by the state in order to be able to secure patrilineal lines because there were men that were coming back from wars. They had been gone for a year and a half and their wife was sitting there with a baby. So there is an agreement between men that this woman is preserved for that particular man. And that was the foundation and the purpose for marriage. Because I told him, I said, listen, if you want to make sure that you have a woman that's not going to leave when a richer man comes along, that's not going to leave when you get sick. I said, we've been socially conditioned to choose one man and to remain with that man for a lifetime as a lifetime partner. And that really benefits men. That really benefits y'all because if you take the social constraints of marriage off in a society where women are able to take care of themselves, I'm like, this was something that (laughs) has been antiquated. Yes. But if you want to lose marriage for the new, (laughs) for the new generation, what benefit really is there for a woman to marry a common man? And I took him on an anecdote. I talked to him about King David. I said, you know, King David was a man who had wives and concubines. And so he looked down off of his roof and saw a woman. He said, I want that woman. I'm going to take that woman. And here's the thing. This man was a king. Everything in his kingdom technically belongs to him. That's the concept of authority. And so he reached out and he took this woman and Nathan, his prophet came in and he said, Hey, David, I want to have a conversation with you about something that's happening in the land. Something that, um, you know, God told me to come and talk to you about. It's very troubling. And he like, what is it, Nathan? What is it? Cause you know, I want to run a godly kingdom. And he said, Hey, there was a man, a rich man. And he had friends that came to see him. And so he had lots and lots of sheep 
but he didn't want to be bothered with slaughtering one of his own sheep. So he went to this poor man, took this man's sheep without his permission, and he slaughtered this man's sheep for his friends. And so David outraged. He like, we can't have this type of thing in my kingdom. Tell me who it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm a, I'm going to bring justice. And Nathan told him, David, that man is you. This was a conversation between God and a king to say that you will honor Mary. This sheep belonged to this man. And I would have, God told David, I would have given you any woman in this kingdom that would have been yours. But this one you could not have because this one belong to this man. You know, marriage is something that is a contract between men. David had to kill this woman's husband in order to lawfully be able to take her as a wife. This is a limit that God places on relationships between men. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the extent of the competition that men would go through if there wasn't such a thing as marriage that gave that boundary to say you can have all of these women, but not this one. At least fundamentally speaking. Yeah, yeah, we know people cheat. Men and women both have free will. But I thought it was an interesting distinction even coming out of the Bible because people love to pull David out their ass when it comes time to defend polygamy. But there was a boundary placed even on that. And when you really follow themes in the Bible, because I know people love to tell me I'm not endowed by the Spirit of God to uh, divide the Bible. But it was the same thing that God said to Adam. He said, of all the trees, of all the fields, you may eat. But of this one, you may not. Um, The fruit on this tree it's sacred. It's preserved. And we live in a society where people are increasingly wanting a secular society where nothing is sacred, where nothing has any sort of boundaries on it. But if it wasn't for the sanctity, if you will, the sacredness of marriage, it would, in my opinion, have a greater effect on the same men <laughs> that say they don't want it and they don't value it. Cause he said it to me, he said, well, you know, marriage is, you know, unnatural. Men are not monogamous. Why would a man put himself into a position that was unnatural for him? And I told him because it's a discipline and everything that men acquire by force comes from discipline. And so it was funny because we went through the conversation and later in the conversation, he talked to me about being a vegan. And he said that he had become a vegan four years ago or seven years ago. I don't know. He said whatever he said, but he said he had become a vegan because he had all these health issues and that, you know, ever since becoming a vegan, he, you know, hasn't had those same issues to deal with and how, you know, at first it was hard because he didn't want to give up bacon. And I mean, like he threw, he, he gave me the argument, y'all. He gave it to me. See, people don't understand. It's just rope. And eventually, I'm going to tie it off and hang you with it. I mean, uh. and so he talked all this great talk about, you know, the benefits of drinking water and electrolytes and veganism. And so I was baiting them because, baby, I, I'm the best at this debate thing. I was baiting them. And I said, um, you know, I just don't think I could do it. Be a vegan? Give a bacon? You know, I started throwing out all of these different things. And I asked him, I said, how do you do it? And he said, it's a discipline. I had to discipline myself. And I said, it's a discipline like marriage? Because I had already said it earlier in the conversation, and I wish y'all could have seen his face. I don't know if that man go go and marry the woman who has sacrificed being a wife in order to be his eternal girlfriend, but I would like to hope so. But I wanted to share that with you because I am working on a series, like I told you, of talking about how marriage has gone from institutionalized marriage that's recognized by the state to companionate marriage, this thing that guys are trying to get us to submit ourselves to the 1950s, you know, breadwinning gender roles, white picket fence, 
stay at home wife model to what we have now, which is an individualized marriage and how we can actually self-actualize through marriage now if we learn how to do it differently. If we learn some skills that will actually make marriage an asset again, make marriage great again. Um, it's unfortunate because the things that make marriage such a detriment in, in this society is exactly the reason why we need it. And like I said, I'm not campaigning for marriage. I've been into, um, I can see myself getting married again, but it would definitely have to be under the right circumstances. However, my lack of success in marriage does not change my opinion on the function of it inside in society and the good that it does for the foundational system of all institutions. We're looking at an eroding of morality and eroding of all different sorts of systems because of a lack of understanding of how the cellular institutions like marriage, like community, like church actually function in society on a greater whole. And so I just think it's conversations we got to have. We got to go ahead and take time, carve it out, plug it in to, to make things make sense again, you know, because I'm a proponent of anarchy, but anarchy is still a system. It cannot come at the greatest benefit of the individual to the greatest detriment of society. But I want to hear what you think. Did I present a valid, I ain't say you had to agree with it, it's just got to be valid, a valid argument <laughs> for marriage and why everybody don't need 18 wives. It just... I don't know how these common men think they're going to be the ones to win the marriage lottery if we get rid of it. I don't know how they think they can have standards like this and have options like this. Where are the women going to come from? But I want to hear what you think. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you there. But until the next time, y'all already know you can clock out for me. You're dismissed. Yeah, Barbara, it's Richie. Yeah, look it, I ain't never coming home no more. Take it easy.